Good day, viewer. Welcome again to our series on 10 days, 40 days of prayer, rather. This has been a blessed season, and I'm glad that you are still tuned and you are watching and following and sharing. I thank you also for, you know, talking to me. Those of you who are calling me and telling me how this is blessing you and how you are also extending this blessing to other people. I'm glad that we have formed a team of the family of God, wherever you are, and the Lord is blessed to have us here and is interested to reaching out in our own individual situations to bless us. And every morning, every afternoon, every evening, wherever you are, you can be sure that the Lord is concerned about your situation. As we begin today, one, one more time, we are still continuing with the uh, righteousness of Christ series and today we are looking at the question, what is righteousness? We're talking about Christ and his righteousness. But then the question is, what is righteousness? Day 22nd of the 40 days of prayer. We are past half of the series. And we thank the Lord for your patience. Let's pray together before we begin. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of this fellowship one more time. As we get into the study briefly and then take time to pray, Lord, we invite you to speak to us. May I not be seen. May you be seen as you speak to us. Lord, I pray that may your presence be our blessing. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What is righteousness? We're talking about Christ and his righteousness. The question is, what is righteousness? The text is Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 6. The Beatitudes and verse number 6 is specifically talking about the Beatitudes that deals with righteousness. Blessed are the mass for, I mean, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. What is righteousness? I was checking through um, definitions of righteousness from dictionary and from the others, and I picked a few what is good at the best of all definitions is what my best author gives, LNG, will you excuse me for this? I mean, I just love this author. She speaks to my heart. And I pray that she also may be speaking to your heart. She defines righteousness in a very unique way in the book, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings, page 18. You can read and go and check this. Thoughts from Mount of Blessings, page 18. I consulted her and this is what she has to say. Righteousness is holiness. Righteousness is holiness likeness to God. And God is love. She goes on to say, it is conformity to the law of God. Righteousness is holiness, or righteousness is likeness to God, or righteousness is conformity to the law of God. For all thy commandments are righteous, quoting from Psalms 119 and verse number 172. And love is the fulfilling of law, quoting Romans chapter 13, verse number 10. So righteousness then is love. And love is light. And the life of God, powerful. <laughs> the righteousness of God is embodied in Christ, she says. We receive righteousness by receiving him. She comes down there. Without Christ, there's no righteousness. This is very, very powerful. That righteousness then is holiness. Remember, uh, we, 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 we saw uh, that God is holy and he dwells in holiness. And so here she says that righteousness is holiness. Meaning, righteousness is God because God is holiness. You see? So if God is holiness... And righteousness is holiness. Then the only way for us to receive holiness is to be with God. It is until we are with God, then we can be said to be righteous people. You will never be righteous if you're not with God. But now, there's another element she brings in this definition. How do we then know we are with God? It's, she says it is through love. She says, if you love me, you shall keep my commandments. And she says, God is love. Love is God. God is love. We love God by then keeping commandments. 
It is conformity to the law of God. You cannot purport to love God and you don't keep his commandments. And it can be true that you are in love with God, you have given your heart to God, yet you are living contrary to his law. It is until you are in conformity to the law of God that then you can be said to be in love with God. And then you can be said to be living righteously. The very powerful quote from Ellen G. White. So she, she, she says, and she agrees with the authors of the scriptures in Psalms 119 verse 172, that all the commandments are righteous, that the commandments of God are righteousness. So when we talk, asking what is righteousness, we are saying God is righteousness. What is righteousness? Conformity to the law of God is righteousness. What is righteousness? The law of God is righteousness. Hallelujah. I love this. Now, what are we saying here this morning? We are saying here, simply, for you to experience revival and reformation is for you to start honoring your life in harmony to the word of God, to the law of God, to live within the confines of the commandments of God. Because he says, if you love me, you shall keep my commandments. I want this morning before we pray to pose this question to you. Do you hunger and thirst for righteousness of God? Do you hunger and thirst for Christ's righteousness? In other words, do you hunger and thirst for keeping the law of God? I have heard people saying, it doesn't matter whether you keep the law or not, grace of God is enough. But I want to let you know, grace of God has appeared upon the earth to teach us to say no to sin. And we cannot say no to sin without the law of God. For it is the law of God that teaches transgression. Let me speak to somebody who watches this video and you're not advent, you're not a Sabbath keeper, to remind you that among the commandments of God, God says, keep the Sabbath day holy. He invites us in the fourth commandment to remember the seventh day and keep it holy. You can purport to love God and break that commandment. Of course, keeping the entire commandment is the will of God upon us. And I want to invite you, and especially if there's somebody who is watching this video, you've never thought about being an Adventist, keeping the Sabbath holy as part of the commandments of God, we invite you kindly to choose to visit with us and worship with us and feel and experience the fellowship of Sabbath. God ordained a special day for worship. He says, I sanctified it, I made it holy, I put it apart for worship purposes. Remember, the Sabbath the day. Righteousness is living in conformity to the law of God. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied, for they shall be filled. As we pray this morning, is it your desire that you may yearn, you may hunger, you may thirst for righteousness. In other words, you may, you may thirst for doing God's will. You see, it's not everyone who comes to me saying, Lord, Lord, shall finally be found in his kingdom, but only that person who does the will of God. So join with me this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are, that we may seek the Lord in prayer on this line. But just to request us to pray that God would help you in person, in particular, Stop believing the lies of Satan, that a day is a day, that it doesn't matter how you live, it doesn't matter the church you go to, it matters to God. It matters to God, that is why he said, remember. So stop believing the lies of Satan that make you think you are not worthy of his love. Pray and ask God to impute and impart his righteousness to you. Pray that no, the non-Christian staff who work during the general conference sessions will sense God's love and presence in the delegates and it will lead them to want to know more about Seventh-day Adventists. 
Pray for all the logistical details of the general conference sessions to go smoothly. Pray for those in, in the 1040 window who have never heard this wonderful truth and have distorted concept of God's love and character. Pray for the seven member list, your friends that you have. Pray for me. Pray for all people that you care for. Pray for your own salvation. And as Paul says, working it out with fear and trembling. For we are not here just as another way of life, but we are here because we are so in intentional in living good lives and being received into the kingdom of God. Let's pray together, my dear viewer. A gracious Father in heaven, thank you so much for this privilege. Sweet our prayer that calls me from the world of care, leads me at his feet, Lord, we are at your feet. This moment, we pray that you may take away all the cares of life from us and give us peace. Forgive us, Lord, our transgressions. Cleanse us from all manner of unrighteousness. Feed us for eternity. This week, we are continuing discussing the theme of Christ and his righteousness. That our sinful ways may appear more sinful and a deep desire to denounce them may be a reality in our lifetime. That we may seek your grace and walk in your righteousness, walk in your light. And today we are, we are talking about righteousness and what we are finding from the scriptures and from the pen of inspiration. God is righteousness. God is holiness. And righteousness, God being holy and being righteous, he invites us then to live righteous lives. This is conformity to your law, that we shall not neglect the subject of the Ten Commandments and living controlled by the Ten Commandments. We thank you and appreciate because you said, if you love me, you shall keep my commandments. I'm praying that, Lord, my viewer, may think about the commandments of God, may see the inscription of your love in those Ten Commandments there, the transcript of your character, that we may desire to live in harmony with your will. We shall be transformed. We shall be renewed. We shall be revived. We shall be equipped. We shall be given a desire to go and share this good news to other people. I am praying the Lord we shall touch your children from all corners of the world. We have read the list of prayer concerns to you. You know them, Lord. We don't have to repeat again. And I pray that we may meet all these desires according to the riches in glory. I thank you even for the seven-member seven list that my viewers have already, um, you know, put, and they are committing these individuals to you. Lord, may you meet each of them at the very point of need and answer and give them testimonies. Lord, help us to know what you're doing um, upon the lives of your children. And together as a team, we shall be revived, encouraging one another and praying for one another. And finally, we shall find ourselves as a miracle in heaven. And when you remember the struggles we had, the methods we used to apply for redemption, we shall say, thank you, Lord. Indeed, your ways are true, and they have given us victory. We want to especially remember the general conference session that is upcoming in the next few days, Lord. We pray for all the leaders. We pray for the delegates. We pray for those who shall facilitate one in one way or another, even those who are not of faith, because they will be there. We shall be using even a part of the facilities that people who will be there would be Adventists. Lord, we are praying for them that by interacting with us in that session, they may come to admire how we live and admire Christ in us and be also attracted for eternity. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives. Thank you for your blessings and thank you for the miracles. Thank you for healing. If my viewer is sick or struggling with any challenges, Lord, we are praying that we may fight for them in Jesus' name. Break down the chains of the evil one. And give them victories and success in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear viewer, for staying tuned. Thank you for even subscribing to this channel. If you have not, just click that button, that red button, so that you can continue receiving these blessings. But also, I invite you to share with as many people as you can. See you tomorrow. May the Lord be with you.